In this video, I'm going to go over runout tolerances. So there's two runout tolerances, circular runout and total runout. What they do is control the surface variation relative to a datum axis. It's convenient to think of them in terms of their counterpart form tolerances. So circular, to circular runout is very similar to circularity. The difference being circularity is a form tolerance, so there's no datums. You're just seeing if each individual cross-section is circular. Whereas circular runout, you're checking the circularity, but to a datum. So you're gaining the location of that circle to your datum axis. It's the same thing with total runout. In total runout, you're checking the cylindricity to a datum axis. So you get cylindricity and you get the location of that cylinder to your datum axis. So runout tolerances have a couple of you know common attributes. They always require at least one datum axis because the inspection is to rotate the part 360 degrees and then see what the surface variation is. So it would look something like this. You grab your part, you put it in a precision collet, chuck, V-block, whatever, so that you can spin it 360 degrees and the part stays true to the datum axis. You put an indicator on it and then you see what the indicator reads. Runout can use two uh, cylinders or two conical surfaces for a datum axis. Now I'll show you an example in a minute but when you use two, say two diameters for one datum, you only get a single axis. So if I have this part and this cylinder and this cylinder are defined as datums and it says you use them both at the same time, it's intended that you grab both of them. When you spin the part, there's still only gonna be one axis of rotation, okay? So that, even though there's two datums in the feature control frame with the hyphen, still only one datum axis. And then surfaces perpendicular to the axis of rotation can be controlled with a runout. So let me throw, I'll put the first example on the board. Here we have two diameters with a circular runout of 10 thousandths applied with a leader to the smaller diameter. If you notice, the runout tolerance is smaller than the size tolerance. This is the most common way to do it. So in this example, the runout tolerance is controlling the form of that diameter, so essentially the circularity, and the location to axis datum A. Now in runout tolerances, the datum references are always at RFS, regardless of feature size. So you have to make full contact with the datum with whatever inspection equipment you're using. So if you have a chuck, you're supposed to collapse onto the part until it doesn't wiggle around anymore, and then you can rotate it 360 degrees. You cannot use any fixed gauging for uh, runout tolerances. Now on this part, the size is not controlled with the runout, right? The size can vary more than the runout tolerance. So, you know, you can still check it with calipers, your two point checks to make sure the size is within tolerance and then everything else would be controlled with that runout tolerance. Now, the difference between circular and total runout is that circular runout is individual checks at every cross section. So. If we get our part in a V-block or a collet, we spin it 360 degrees, right, with the indicator on it, we can move the indicator away, bring it back, and spin it 360 degrees. So essentially the indicator can move up and down relative to the axis of rotation. Not while the test is occurring, right? You have to do the full 360 degrees, make sure it's thin tolerance on the indicator, and then you can move it up or down for the next check. So what that could give you what that could give you is that if you check it here, right, or here, you could get 
something that's within the runout tolerance, so relatively circular and located to the datum axis. But along the length of the part, it could vary within the size tolerance, right? So you check here, it's circular and located. You can move the indicator down to check here, right? You can move the indicator down, you can move it up. So circularity does not control the straightness or the taper of a cylindrical feature like this. In this case, the limits of size would control the taper or uh, cylindricity of that particular feature. Now, I've tried to draw the jaws of a chuck here. When you clamp onto the datum feature, the axis of your inspection equipment, so in this case, uh, a chuck, is the axis of your feature, right? So whatever the axis of this is, projects through here, that's what you're spinning about, okay? So it's important to realize you're not spinning about the feature you're measuring, you're spinning about the actual datum. So in theory, that should be the most important feature where it mates up at, at assembly. Now, because circular runout can be, the checks are individual, it's not limited to cylindrical surfaces like this. It can be used on spherical or conical surfaces as well. So I'll put an image up on the board. So up here is a, a conical surface. The idea with this, the only difference is that your indicator needs to be normal to the surface you're checking. So if your conical surface is like this, your indicator needs to be normal to this, not normal to the axis of revolution, okay? So perpendicular to the surface, that is the check you're performing. Run out of a uh, circular runout could be applied to a spherical surface, which I'll show right here. This check is a little tricky to find out where you're perpendicular to the spherical surface. Um, you're, you're basically normal to it at any given point. So, Theoretically, you should always be moving your indicator as you're making individual checks, right? So next up is circular runout applied to a surface perpendicular to the datum axis. What this controls is the wobble of the surface. It just makes sure it kind of spins true. It doesn't control flatness. Flatness is controlled within the limits of size because you're doing individual checks. So you could get kind of a waffle shaped area on a perpendicular surface. Now we'll move on to total runout. Total runout has two arrows uh, to distinguish it from circular runout. Sur total runout is a complete uh, what the ASME standard calls a composite control. It controls cylindricity, straightness, taper, profile, everything except the size. So this is only applicable to cylindrical features or uh, flat surfaces perpendicular to the axis of revolution. Not tapers, not cones, not spherical surfaces. The check for this is much more difficult because in order to make sure uh, it's straight along the length, you can't move your indicator. The indicator needs to move parallel and the same distance from the axis of revolution. So, what that means is that if we lock our indicator in here, spin it 360 degrees, when we check the next spot, the indicator cannot move away from or toward the datum axis. It has to stay locked. It can only move in translation parallel to the datum axis. This is how we control the straightness and cylindricity of that feature. So it's a much more difficult uh, tolerance to inspect and potentially to make. What it does for a flat surface perpendicular to the datum axis, they say we're checking this flat surface, it controls the uh, flatness and perpendicularity to the datum axis. Next up, I'll put the image on the board here is a compound or a multiple datum feature. Uh, ASME keeps giving it different names. Essentially, like I talked about before, it's when you have two diameters that form a single axis. So if you know 
your part is mating between two bearings, right? Uh, you want to inspect it as such. So the idea is you grab it with you know, two V-blocks or collets, however you're gonna do it. And when you spin it, it'll be spinning on a single axis. Okay? Neither datum is more important than the other. They could both be different sizes or the same size. This is often used with very long parts that you couldn't easily control with one datum. This can also be used with machining centers. So occasionally machining centers are called out as datums. They're not the best datum though because normally machining centers are not very functional. They're just there to aid in making the actual part. So uh, as a designer, I'd only choose a machining center as a datum if there's no other reasonable choice. Whenever you're choosing datums for a run out, you want a nice large diameter with a good bit of surface area because the inspector is gonna have to grab it in some way. So if I chose just this small diameter as a datum here, it's gonna be very difficult to capture that with any normal inspection equipment. So at inspection, if it's off, you know, half a thousandths here and I go to inspect the run out, it's gonna be more off over here. So this would be a prime candidate to make both these datums uh, a compound datum feature, right? So you check it like this, it makes the part more stable. Now, what you'll see on drawings occasionally where you have two datums, but it's not a compound or multiple datum, right? You've got datum A primary, B secondary. So the idea is you would grab the part here and then you'd have to make one point of contact on datum B. In my opinion, this is superfluous because when you're doing a run out check, the translation doesn't matter at all, okay? So in this case, datum B really isn't you know, very necessary. But, in the other case, if we made the surface perpendicular to the datum axis, datum B, then we do need datum A. There always has to be a datum axis for run out because we've got to rotate the part. So in this case, we make full contact with datum B, say against the nose of our chuck or collet or V-block, and then clamp down on A, and then we could spin the part around. So you can have a situation where you make full contact with B, and then A only grabs on one point, and that would be okay in this situation. You're saying B is more important than A. B would be the mating surface at assembly. The next thing is the advantage to run out, like why would you use run out instead of position or profile or something? Run out is good for parts that spin because you're controlling the form, the balance of the part. The difference between run out and concentricity is that run out also controls form, whereas concentricity doesn't necessarily control form. Run out covers your circularity or cylindricity, so it's really good for things like pulleys, drive shafts, anything that's spinning and potentially has to mate up at assembly the outer boundary for a runout tolerance is the largest size, the MMC, plus the geometric tolerance for an external feature. The inner boundary is, in this case, the LMC minus the geometric tolerance. So if you're doing a tolerance stack up, it's pretty straightforward to figure out what your boundaries are. Uh, there's not that, there's no bonus tolerance with run out tolerances. Uh, so I wouldn't apply it to anything with like a, you know, a clearance application. But anything that spins, especially at high speed, run out is a, a good tolerance to apply. Now the last thing you'll see on older drawings would be called full indicator movement, FIM, or total, total indicator reading, TIR. So, they might point to a diameter and say total indicator reading, you know, five thousandths. The important thing with gd &T is that you're specifying which diameter is the datum. If you have several diameters, think about like a stepped pulley, it matters which one you grab to inspect the rest of the diameters, okay? So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below.